All right, so in this example, we're gonna work with variables to control those visited states, or there's actually the disabled states when we return back to the start screen. So the process, the, right, the end result looks the same, right? We're gonna preview, uh, we're gonna click a button. In this case, we're actually gonna leave the slide, right? You can see that uh, when we click here, we actually jumped over here to topic one. And then when we return, we click the close button, we're gonna return back to the start screen, but then now we see that our button is disabled. And we know it's disabled because we see a piece of it. It's obviously visually different, but also we don't get the hover state. We still don't see any way that we can click this. If I'm clicking it, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's been deactivated or disabled is what Storyline uses. So here's how this works. Couple things here, right? So on this first one, the start screen, we are just setting triggers, right, that jump to a slide. Each of these has a trigger that jumps to a new slide. So rather than showing a layer, we're jumping to a slide. In this case, each of these has a, a specific slide it jumps to. Well, over on the slide layer, on the slide level for these new slides, we actually do a couple things. The first is we really want to set a variable. Now, a variable for us, in this case, is a way to, for us to tell Storyline that, hey, this slide has been completed. Right? This is we're just basically saying that this is correct. As users been here, users interacted with the slide, it's completed. And we do that with variables. So I'm over here in the triggers panel and I just want to open up my project variables. We could use any type of variable. Storyline has three types of variables, right? The true false variable, the text variable, and the number variable. So if I created a new variable, you can see that we have three different types. All three types would actually work here. It really has more, uh, really when you're selecting these, it has more to do with, well in this example, it has more to do with however you like to think through this. I like to think of this as uh, the, the slide has been visited, true or false, rather than um, yes or no. I could use text and say, you know, completion equals yes, completion equals no, and then even I could use a number, like, you know, one is, is visited and true, zero is not, or something. But uh, true, false seems to work real, really easy here for me, and then I would just set that initial value. Now, in this case, I already have my variables, but if I click OK, you can see it's right there. One thing you can't do is change the type of variable, right? Once I'm a true, false, I can't change this to a number, but I could change the default value. I can go back and forth that way. So I set up three, right? We have three topics, three questions, and I just wanted three different slides, uh, three different variables to track each of the slides that we visit. Go ahead and click OK. And so what I do then is for the close button, and this is just how I set it up, you might have a return button or a continue button, um, but the button is somehow a way to get back to right our start screen. We need to just need to return here and take the next question or, or choose another question. So we do that. In this case, I want to do two things. I want to change that variable to say, hey, this, this, this slide's been visited. That equals true. So if I double click this, I'm adjusting my variable for topic one, right? I have three different slides. This is sl topic one slide. So my topic one variable, my value equals true. Originally it was false. Now we're saying it's true. I can now evaluate when this slide is true, I can do something else. And that's how we'll change the states back on that home menu. So I'm just saying, hey, when you click here, I know that this slide has been completed. And then of course we jump back to that start screen. Now a real quick big warning here, trigger order matters. And anytime that you're setting a variable and leaving the slide, you always want that variable first. If I try to jump back to that start screen and then change my variable, that's ah, too late. I'm already back on that home screen before this ever gets initialized or fired. So. Um, you definitely want to work with setting or adjusting your variables first and then return to the start slide. And then we just do the same thing for the other two slides, right? We just adjust those variables for topic two and then topic three. Now, finally, we need to really reevaluate that variable so we know when to change this, this object, right, to the disabled state. And we do that with another uh, trigger. In this case, we're gonna use a trigger to evaluate the variable. So let me just bring this up. So now we want to change the state, right? We've done this before, change the state of an object. In this case, that object is the question one, to disabled when the timeline starts. So when we re-enter this slide, the timeline's going to start and the object, obviously the, the timeline of this main slide. But here we want to actually set a condition that says when topic one is equal to value of true. That way we are basically not going to ever change anything here unless that is true. And it's only true if we visit it and then click that close button. So that's how we can.